Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of November 28th, 2025. Let's start off today talking about parts and events. If you look at your project window in Cubase and you hit Control P, you open up a window called the pool. Very interesting thing to explore this window because it shows you every piece of audio that you have in your project. If I go up to this MIDI part that I have that's a piano, and I render it down to audio, open my pool window back up, then I now have this piece of audio. It's called piano. I can even click on it and audition it if I wanted to. But the interesting thing is that next to the name piano in this case, or any audio that you have, there's a number, and it shows you how many times this piece of audio is actually being used in your project. Right now, mine shows number one, because there's only one audio part here, and it's only being used one time. If I take my scissors and I cut this piece of audio into four different pieces, and again, look at the pool window, now it shows next to piano a number four. What's interesting about this number four is it's telling us that we have the same piece of audio being used four times. How can it be the same piece of audio and not four different pieces of audio? If we take any one of these pieces of audio, which are called audio events, and grab one of the handles and stretch it out, we can see that we have the whole piece of audio here. And if we highlight any one of these pieces of audio and look up on the info line, we can see that each one of them has the same name of piano. Point being is that even though we have all these different pieces, it's all the same piece of audio that's being used three times, four times, or however many times. This audio event is non-destructive in Cubase. In other words, no matter if we cut it or move it, it still refers to the same piece of audio, and it's just being used a number of different times as a copy. If I take one of these audio events, go up to audio and bounce selection, if I look up on the info line now, that particular piece of audio has a different name to it. And if I open the pool back up, I can see that my original piano event shows that there's only three instances of it being used. And the new rendered piano part is being used one time. If you want a good understanding of what's being used in your project, how many times it's being used, open up the pool, examine some of this information, and begin being aware of what's actually in your project. Let's talk about the range tool and various selection options. Select a little up and down line, which is the range selection. You can then click and drag, perform any number of functions on small ranges. Along with that, under the edit menu, if you come down to the option that says select, you have all these extra commands to help you move and make selections very quickly. First of all, you can choose the option for all, and that selects everything for you. I have the key command control A for that. Just the opposite, go back to select and choose none. That key command is control shift A. I change my loop points up on the ruler, then come down to the option that says in the loop. Then anything that's within that loop gets selected. If the pieces are bigger than the loop, those will be selected as well. And this behavior will change depending on whatever tool you're using. If I go back to my selection tool and I select this event and then go up to the edit and in the select menu, I say from the start to the cursor, then only that part of the event that's on the left side of the cursor and any other events that may be in this area are going to get selected. If I switch over to my range tool, make that same selection and perform the same operation from the start to the cursor, then it selects the whole range from the cursor to the beginning. If I come back, choose the other option here from the cursor to the end, then it chooses everything to the right. If I open up a MIDI part and choose any particular note, come back to my options for select, I have the choice to take an equal pitch from the same octave or from all octaves by choosing either one of these, and all the notes on that particular pitch are going to get selected. The important thing to know with all of this is that all these various commands that are available here in this menu, if you instead go to edit and come down to your key commands, then look in the section that says edit, you will find many of those same commands in this list that you can then either learn the command for or assign your own personal commands to. And then when you want to do things like select everything or select nothing or so many of the other various commands, you can assign your key commands and perform these functions very quickly. All right, let's talk about some options for playback and transport. If you come up to your menus under transport, the first option you have is the transport panel. You select that and you get this floating panel, which mimics what you get at the bottom of the project window. Many of your playback, recording, punch in options are done through the transport panel. Many times I have taken the F2 key and used it for other things. And then it becomes tricky how to reassign it if you ever want to. If you go up to edit, down to the key command option, look for the category that says transport. 
open that up, come down the list until you see the open close transport panel. Then you can reassign it if you ever need it again. As you can see on this panel, there are so many buttons and options. Right click in any blank area that you can find. You'll have the option to set up the transport panel. Pick the buttons that you want to see. Simply check them or uncheck them and they appear on the panel. You can also create a preset. You can show all the buttons or you can reset to factory. Many of the fields on the transport bar have three little dots. If you click on it, it will expand what you see. If you hit the show all option, over on the far left, get the performance meter. This can kind of let you know what kind of processor load is going on. You can actually click on this meter, bring up the audio performance meter, and get a more detailed look at all those different readings. Open up the dropout option if you have those kind of problems. Next to that, you have the common record modes. This is what you're going to want to set up for your default operation every time you hit record and when you want to change some of the various recording behaviors. Most of these have definitions next to them, so you can see what these options actually do. And then I'm going to hit F2 and hide that floating panel. And these are just some of the many tips that you will find as you learn about parts and events and range editing and playback and transport as you increase your proficiency in using Cubase. But if you'd like to get some deeper training on all of these subjects, along with step-by-step -step demonstrations, be sure to stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com or click the link in the description to get more information. As always, it's great to have you here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.